All right, so get this. Today we're doing a deep dive on something pretty crazy. Um, what's it really like to live with some physical thing about you that just gets a ton of attention mm. and not like, you know, being really tall or having some weird birthmark? Right, right. No, today we're talking about Jonah Falcon, the guy known for having the world's largest penis. Yeah, what's interesting to me about Jonah is that he's not like some porn star or anything. Mm. He's an actor, and he's actually said no to, I don't even know how many offers from the adult film world. Oh, wow. So I think that makes you wonder about, like, his life and the choices he's had to make. Totally. To really get into it, we've got a bunch of Jonah's interviews. Some of them are from those British morning shows, like, uh... Oh, yeah. This morning. I don't know about you, but I kind of love those shows. Oh, absolutely. They're always so honest and straightforward. Yeah. There's something about British morning TV that's just so refreshing. Mm -hmm. You know, they just cut through all the BS. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so let's go back to when Jonah was a kid. Imagine being 10 and you realize you're different. Not just a little different, but really different. Mm -hmm. Jonah was already eight inches flaccid at that age. Wow. Can you imagine what that must have been like for him? How did that affect how he saw himself? Yeah, it really makes you question what we even consider normal, doesn't it? Yeah. What I find interesting is that Jonah went to a mostly Jewish school. So most of the boys weren't circumcised. Okay. He said his classmates didn't really say anything to his face about it, but he's pretty sure they talked behind his back. Ah, uh, I bet. So you have to wonder how that early experience, like, you know, being different like that, how that affected him and how he related to other people. Definitely. It's like he was dealing with this super personal and honestly kind of sensitive thing. Yeah. In a place where talking openly about that stuff probably wasn't normal. Exactly. And then jump ahead to... When he's an adult, that's when we get the whole suspicious package incident at the San Francisco airport. Oh, yeah. So a private security company, not the TSA. Yeah. yeah, they thought he was smuggling something just because of, like, you know, the bulge in his pants. Oh, my gosh. Instead of trying to hide from that awkwardness. Yeah. You know, Jonah actually reached out to the media himself. Wow. He kind of embraced the funny side of it. He seems to have a pretty good sense of humor about the whole thing. Yeah, he's not afraid to own his story even when it's uncomfortable or maybe gets blown out of proportion. That's a good point. And then there's that interview on This Morning where they literally brought out rulers and diagrams oh my God. to show the difference between Jonah's size, he says nine inches flaccid, 13.5 erect, and the average size. I mean, can you imagine being on national TV and having your anatomy discussed like that with oh. visual aids? Right. It makes you wonder how much of his life has been shaped by those kinds of reactions and, you know, the whole public spectacle of it all. Yeah, absolutely. One of the hosts even compared his erect length to one of those NTA statues, mm -hmm. you know, the National Television Awards they give out in Britain. Come on. They were trying to be funny, but it just shows how Jonah's size is always being compared to objects. Yeah. It's like another way of objectifying him. It's true. It's like his body becomes this thing to be examined and measured instead of just being part of a whole person. Exactly. And speaking of relationships, Jonah's been pretty open about, you know, his past and being promiscuous. Yeah. He blames it on a mix of his size and what he calls a show-off personality. Interesting. But he's also said that phase led to some burnout and self-esteem issues. Oh, wow. It sounds like he was almost trying to live up to what people expected of him because of his size. Mm -hmm. You know, all the assumptions they made. Yeah, like he lost himself in trying to be that person everyone thought he should be. Makes you wonder how much of that show-off personality was really him and how much was just a way to deal with all the attention. That's a good question. Hmm. He's also talked about how a lot of women only date him because they're curious. Mm. So those relationships don't usually last very long. Yeah, that makes sense. It's funny. He said he's found that older women are more interested in actually getting to know him. Interesting. Why do you think that is? Well, they're probably more experienced and maybe not so focused on size. You yeah. Know, they want something real. He likes to take his time with foreplay and focus on making his partner happy. Mm-hmm. But even so, he still runs into people who have other motives, like that one woman who just wanted to film him for OnlyFans. Oh, no. It makes you wonder if he can ever really escape that feeling of being objectified, you know, just seen as a body part and not a whole person. That's a tough one, I bet. And I mean, I know everyone's thinking, do condoms even fit? That's got to be the number one question people have. Yeah. And the answer is, well, sort of. He's a, even the big condoms only fit halfway. Oh, wow. So what does he do? Well, for him, safe sex is about tightness and making sure there's no fluid exchange. Mm. It's not just about the condom. That's definitely different from what most people are used to hearing. For sure. <laughs> He's even talked about having to, like, prop it up at the urinal sometimes. 
Oh my God. Okay. That's an image I wasn't prepared for. Yeah, it's definitely not something most people can relate to, but I think it highlights those everyday practical things that yeah. we don't usually think about when we talk about something as extraordinary as, you know, Jonah's anatomy. Right. It's a good reminder that even the most unique experiences are still grounded in like the normal stuff of being human. Yeah. I like how you put that. It brings us back down to earth. So we've talked about the physical stuff, but what about his career? I mean, obviously, aside from the adult film offers. Right. Of well, he said that studio execs can be pretty conservative. Okay. Which has limited him to mostly doing indie films. Makes you wonder how much talent is being overlooked because people are uncomfortable with his body or have some preconceived notions about him. Oh, definitely. Yeah. It's like he's judged before he even gets a chance to show what he can do. Yeah, exactly. It's not fair at all. He's even said he wants to write and produce his own movie, partly to overcome those limitations and stereotypes. Hmm. That's amazing. It's a way for him to take control of his story and show the world he's so much more than just his anatomy. Exactly. It's like an act of defiance. Mm -hmm. You know, he's refusing to let other people define him. I love that. And it shows how resilient he is, how determined he is to make his own path. Absolutely. He's also talked about how people stereotype him. You know, they assume he's not that smart or that he's just a walking libido, as he put it. Ah, it's such a common stereotype. It is... Remember Billy Pilgrim and Kurt Vonnegut's Slaughterhouse Five? Yeah. He's described as horse hung. And they make him out to be kind of simple. Right. It's like people think if you have a large penis, you can't be intelligent or have any emotional depth. It's so messed up. It is. And it shows how deep these stereotypes run in our culture, mm. even in literature. Wow, that's a great comparison. So we've talked about the physical stuff and the professional stuff, but what about Jonah's personal life? He's openly bisexual and has had partners of both genders. And get this, he's been contacted by a bunch of celebrities. What? Yeah, like Oscar nominees and winners. Yeah. A lot of them from the British Isles, which I thought was interesting. That is interesting. It makes you wonder about different cultures and how they view, you know, endowment. Yeah, definitely something to think about. Jonah has said that some of those encounters might be superficial. Right. But he also points out that attraction is complex. It's not just one thing. He's even said that many partners end up focusing on his green eyes during intimate moments. That's sweet. It's a reminder that we're all more than just our most obvious features, right? There's always more to discover beneath the surface. For sure. Speaking of surface, we have to talk about this other guy, Roberto Escovel Cabrera from Mexico. Oh, yeah. What about him? He claims to have an 18.9 inch penis. Wait, seriously? That's what he says. Wow. But Jonah has actually expressed some doubts about it. Hmm. He's mentioned a CCAT scan that apparently shows Cabrera's penis is actually normal sized. Oh, so what's going on there? It seems like Cabrera has been stretching his foreskin since he was a teenager. What? Yeah, a method which Jonah wasn't exactly impressed yeah. by. I mean, that's taking things to a whole other level. It is, makes you wonder. What drives someone to go to such extremes? Right. Is it fame? A mess-up sense of self? Or maybe try to fit into some crazy ideal? All good questions. Yeah. So after everything we've talked about, where's Jonah at now in terms of self-acceptance? He's actually said he wouldn't change a thing about himself. Wow, really? That's amazing to hear. It seems like he's finally comfortable with who he is. Good for him. Mm. And what about now? What's he focusing on these days? Personal growth and moving forward. I love that. And there's some good news on the relationship front, too, right? Yes. He's actually in a long-distance relationship right now. Oh, wow. So maybe he has found love on his own terms. It really makes you think, what does it even mean to find love and acceptance when you're always being defined by this one thing that everyone notices about you? That's a great question. It's something we should all think about, don't you think? I agree. It really does, right? Yeah. Can you even separate who he eyes from what he has? It's like how much of his identity is just other people's reactions, you know? Yeah, and I think about anyone who has something about them that's different. Right. It could be anything physical, yeah. a personality thing, even a talent. Yeah. Those differences can make you feel special, but also isolated. Totally. It's like this push and pull, wanting to stand out, but also wanting to fit in. Exactly. And for Jonah, I can only imagine how much stronger that is. For sure. You know, I think this deep dive has shown us so much more than just, like, the logistics of living with a large penis. Me too. It's really made us think about our own assumptions about bodies and how we judge people. Yeah, like what we consider normal. Right, and how those standards can be so limiting. Totally. It's like behind every crazy story, there's a real person with their own, you know, struggles and triumphs. Exactly. And with Jonah, 
It's about resilience, humor, and trying to find connection and acceptance in a world that mostly sees him as this one thing. And that's what I really hope people take away from this. What's that? To look past the surface and see the whole person you know, no matter how strange or abnormal they might seem. I couldn't agree more. Judging a book by its cover, or in this case, a man by his anatomy, just misses the point. It really does. I've got to say I have a lot of respect for Jonah for being so open about his story. Yeah, it takes guts to be that vulnerable. Especially knowing people are going to have all sorts of reactions and some of them won't be nice. It's like he's challenging us to be more comfortable with different kinds of bodies and maybe even what we find attractive. It makes you think about how relationships and intimacy are always changing, right? What we find attractive is shaped by so many things, culture, personal experiences, and those are always in flux. That's so true. In a world obsessed with ideal bodies, it's refreshing to hear someone be real about what it's like to live with something that both defies and defines those expectations. That's a great point, and it's a conversation we need to keep having. We need to challenge those stereotypes, question our assumptions, and create a world where everyone feels accepted for who they are, not just what they look like. So what does all this mean for us, you know, as we try to figure out a world where physical attributes still matter so much? That's a good question. It's something we all have to grapple with. What are our own biases? How do we change those harmful stereotypes? Mm. And how can we understand and appreciate the diversity of human experiences, even the messy, unexpected ones? Those are some heavy questions. I hope everyone listening will take some time to think about them. I hope so, too. Because this deep dive isn't just about Jonah Falcon. Right. It's about all of us. That's a perfect way to put it. And on that note, I think it's time to wrap things up. It's been a journey exploring this topic with you. Same here. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive. Yeah, we hope you found it insightful, thought-provoking, and maybe even a little uncomfortable. Because sometimes the most uncomfortable conversations teach us the most, right? Totally, man. Right? right? Sometimes you got to get a little uncomfortable to really learn something. And this is just the beginning, you know? Yeah. We hope you'll keep thinking about this topic. Maybe do some more digging on your own and really examine your own perspectives. I agree. The more we understand about people, the more compassionate we can be. Right. And hopefully that makes the world a little more open and accepting for everyone, no matter how they look or what makes them unique. I couldn't have said it better myself. So until next time, keep diving deep. Yeah, keep exploring. And remember, there's always something new to discover. Absolutely. Thanks again for joining us on this deep dive. It's been a really fascinating one for me. It has been for me, too. It was pretty thought-provoking. Yeah, and sometimes a little uncomfortable, right? Well, yeah, but that's where the real learning happens, I think. I totally agree with you there. So until next time, keep questioning, keep exploring, and keep those conversations going. And keep an open mind. Exactly.